I have to say, punks in a powder cake sounds like a fucking rad band. I'm gonna say, it sounds amazing. But yes, we're here with Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Because just a little while ago, did they release here on the site the Book of the Dead. And uh, no, I'm not joking, I'm dead serious. And with that, they also add in a lot of new stuff as they do. And honestly, I love that, seriously. It is so fun to see all the new stuff they add to the uh, game and all that. I've been playing Pathfinder for quite a lot. I did play the first edition. Now, of course, I play the second edition. I still hope that they will add Blood Rager, which was my favorite class in the first edition. But they have a lot of amazing, funny stuff in the second edition. And we're gonna check out about the Book of the Dead and stuff they've added. And also, we're gonna make a new character with this because they're adding a lot of new stuff, which will lead to a new character. So for that, I'm gonna go to Myth Weavers. I will leave links in the description so you guys can enter these sites yourself and do what you want to do. Uh, Myth Weavers is an amazing site for you that want to use it for like. Uh, role-playing character sheets as you can see here we have a lot of different uh, characters here on my own I have made some are alive some are definitely dead rest in peace Alexander van Strauss my beautiful vampire child rest in peace and we're gonna make a new character sheet though so we're gonna go in for sheet we're gonna pick an Pathfinder second edition and we're gonna call you the bony boy and create sheet and the reason for bony boy is because we're gonna make a skeleton as a playable character which is just fucking amazing because it's really fun because in pathfinder 1 the first edition i actually made a skeleton character which is actually this guy here albert himmelstall which is literally albert heaven steel and he was a paladin in life but he was when he died, he literally bound his soul to the to the, the his bones or whatever to protect the tomb of fallen heroes and stuff like that. And when he long many like thousand years later woke up again, he was a skeleton. Though the problem is, of course, every time he used like divine magic, it hurts him as well. But it was it was really fun. So when I see that they've done a character for well skeleton for Pathfinder 2 it got me really happy so this is the character sheet we get here for this myth weavers it got pretty much everything you need and of course we can add show caster page because I'm, I'm not sure what I'm gonna go but here you have the caster page honestly very easy to do very easy to use I, I just love this and of course you can use this to Randomize your completely rolls and stuff like that, which, which I think is fine. Oh, that's not too shabby rolls. And with that, though, we are gonna go over here. Character creation. You have literally everything. Either if you have the real books, honestly, I want to get the real books because having the real books is just amazing. I'm, I'm such a nerd about stuff like that. But this is a very good way to get access and do stuff, you know, checking out what to, to do the characters, stuff like that. So we're gonna go to Ancestries. And the core, I mean, now of course, before you make a nilly willy, uh, just cool, bony skeleton boy, girl, or whatever, you need to ask your DMs if they're okay with it, because certain characters, certain settings, and certain races might not be fitting for the campaign or the adventure, so to speak. So it is important that you have an open dialogue with your DM about it. And because, yeah, as you can see, some races are more common than others, though it also depends on what where you are and what you are, so to speak. And oh, I like Gnolls as well. Orcs. Orcs are really cool here, actually. My main character I've been playing in uh, uh, the big campaign my friends are playing is an Orc Rogue. Which was really fun, because she's like huge, big, strong, and really smart. It was really fun. She's awesome. Now she's a Fey Shadow Queen that is unplayable. <laughs> That's a story for, of its own one day. But what we are interested in is in this one. Skeleton. Spooky, scary skeleton. And here you have some neat images of the skeletons. Look at them. Look at them. Which is just really neat. I, I really, I just really like them. And skeletons are considered among the lowest type of undead. They are typical mindless creatures, lacking many of the abilities that make other undead a serious threat. See, really? 
I mean, just imagine if a skeleton with a sword, even if it's a rusty, blunty fucking sword, walks away. That would tear the fucking little shit out of me. Dude, the people and the, in the world of Pathfinder are fucking hardcore, man. However, the animated bones of dragons, giants, and other great beasts make for dangerous for our well, that's true. Powerful living creatures can retain some of their might and intellect upon returning as a skeleton. Some necromancers turn their strongest enemies to skeletal undead servants, assuming they can keep control of them. Yeah, so this is something I fi find really interesting because I love the idea of being able to play an, an undead because there is often this like idea that all thing that is undead is evil. But as I personally see it, is that undeads are many times simply a tool of magic in that sense, you know? Many, if you have like a Phrasma believer, you know Phrasma is very much like destroy all undead so the souls can return. But I just see many times a skeleton, for example, is just using the bones like a tool, like you're using a sword to make it a tool, you know, and stuff like that. I just find it, find it fascinating in the very broad prospect of things, which can really live up a, a, a dungeon group and all of that. So we have all this. You, you might. Uh, this is this is all like giving you ideas, and I love that. It can give you like very distinct with ideas about your character. Uh, and I love this. Um, skeleton adventure of the scene set themselves apart from other skeletons, but dressing as flamboyantly as their station allows. Large feathery caps, ornate armor, embroidered silks, or glittering jewelry like staple of their wardrobe. Some carve intricate tattoos on their bones or paint their skull to make a sense of self that simple skeletons lack and to signal the living they don't like they are not like other undead. And I love that. It's I mean, imagine that. That you were maybe a human, a dwarf, a gnome or whatever, and you're just a a pile of walking bones. And you try to maintain the individuality of who you was and who you still are. And honestly, I think that it makes undead characters, especially a skeleton like this, very interesting to play. I haven't played it yet myself, but it's something I'm really eager to do. And now, though, of course, here we have the mechanics. Hit points, six, which is not very high, but you know what? They are bones, so that's, that's something. Uh, I think this is pretty fun. Ability boost, dexterity, and charisma. That is not what I, when I think about a skeleton. Boost to charisma? What? That's awesome. That's really fun. I love when they do like a little bit different than you expect. Intelligence? I can see that. Uh, and then of course languages. You get common, necroil and additional languages. And then of course the final thing is undeath. You have basic undead benefits, which is a new thing. We can open the link. Uh, for, your, for your undead hunger, you don't eat flesh like ghouls or drink blood like vampires. Because depending if, if you're a ghoul, you want flesh, vampires want blood. Uh, liches want knowledge and stuff like that, but you instead collect bones, so I imagine it like, oh no, you got damaged in a fight and your like collarbone broke, so yeah, I, 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 you got a new one in your backpack or something like that, like, ooh, I found a cool looking collarbone, I gotta switch it out, <laughs> which I think is just really fun. And basic undead benefits, dark type and skeleton ancestry that follow can give the basic undead benefits detail here. So you get Necro Language, Undead Vision, you gain low light Vision, or Dark Vision. I mean, it, it depends on your ancestry, like if you're based on a human, you would get low light Vision. If you're an elf, that already have it, you would get Dark Vision instead. Uh, negative Healing, you're damaged by positive damage and aren't healed by positive healing. So that, that's the same thing like many Undeads do have. You get hurt by like Divine Healing Magic and stuff like that, but Harmful Magic heals you instead. So that is a very important thing to think about if you're having an such character in your party. I had that. As I mentioned, I had this um, character, Alexander Van Strauss. He was a Dampier. So he was hurt by positive healing. And we had a cleric in our party. When, before he, my character joined, he loved to like use big AoE heals to heal everyone, like a fucking heal tank. But he couldn't do that suddenly when my character was there, and that changed quite a lot in the dynamic. dynamic. Though it wasn't uh, that problematic when he wanted to kill my character, then it was just very easy to just heal him to death. <laughs> but yeah, so that is something you need to think about if your team, well, party is full of like living, and 
they just throwing AoE heals everywhere, and yeah, there's a risk you might die then. Um, negative survival. Unlike normal energy, you're destroyed when reduced to zero H hit points. Instead of powerful negative energy, attempts to keep you from being destroyed. Uh, so the, the rules are kind of the same in a way. Uh, like, you don't get destroyed in the same way like a uh, living being, but you can't be stabilized either, though. Immunity to death effects, you're immune to death effects, which is... You know what? That's really nice. Disease and poison protection, you gain plus one uh, to saving throws against disease and poisons. And undead hunger, though, which was the bone thing. Uh, either that you switch out bones or you gnaw on a bone, which you ever think is fitting. So, yeah. The stats and all that is not too wild, but there is something fun here. And uh, I do like this undead, uh, the basic undead benefits. And with that, we're gonna check out the heritage. We have a bunch of those. Compact skeleton, which is like gnome, an undead based on a gnome, goblin, and a halfling. You get your sizes small instead of medium. You're getting quick squeeze feet, even if you don't train in acrobatics. Tight space, not tight enough to require the squeeze activity, aren't difficult to train for you. So that's interesting. Father Skeleton. Humans! Yes, we humans are nothing but father. A cannon father in this case. Uh, so those skeletons can easily be mass produced despite their name. Father Skeletons make rather mobile food soldiers. So yeah, you know, base speed 30 instead of 25, which is honestly really nice. Monster Skeletons. Inhuman Skeletons are created for both their deadly physical attacks and their terrifying appearance. So it's literally they have taken bones and stuff like that from all sorts of monsters to make this creature. So you can you get a claw, horn, tail, or a wing as an extra unarmed attack and stuff like that, which I think is really cool because you can really mix together your own monster skeleton. Like, uh, obviously you're still medium size and all that, so you're not bigger per se, but you can have like this weird like, oh yeah, he's kind of like a gorilla built with a big horn skull of a rhinoceros or something like that. So yeah, this can, can be very fun. And a sturdy skeleton, which is. Um, Dwarf, Orc, or other creature with a very sturdy, sturdy, girdy be, uh, build. You get 10 H hit points and uh, die hard feet instead of 6 HP. Uh, which is nice. Especially if you want to play more like a beefy one. Beefy boy, beefy bony boy, or beefy bony girl, or in beef. And I think that is really fun to see that the difference in what race you were in life, which can influence your character over the time, you know, which I think is really fun. But now we're gonna make the basic of the character, we're gonna roll our character stats. And by that I simply google dice roller and you get up this, if you don't have the real dice of course, which I do have lots of those, but for the video I will be using this. And now every group have their own way on how to roll their stats. Me and my friends have always done it like this, we take 4d6 and we roll these like this, and then we remove the lowest number, which is a 2, leaving us with 11 as the number. So we're gonna do that, we put 11 here so far, and the reason we do that is to give our characters a little bit beefier stats, you know, it's nothing insane, but just a little bit more oomph. After all, we are supposed to be the main heroes and all that, but there's many different ways to do it. And uh, some even use just points, like you get 100 points to spend on your stats or something like that. And yeah, it, it's very many different ways to do it, and nothing is really wrong, it's what your group decide on. But this is how me and my friends do it. So we're gonna roll here again, and we get uh, 9, which is not too good, but well, whatever. He's a bony boy, he have 9 in somewhere. And we got a uh, 9, 12. And here we go, uh, ah, 15, that's not too shabby, that's nice, that's nice. And we're gonna go with a nice roll, oh my god, this is lots of fives there. Fifth horn, and the last one will be an 11, here we go. Yeah, nothing crazy, but definitely not too bad. So we're gonna place these, depending on of course what kind of class are we gonna play. And with that, I need to do like this, so we can get uh, class up, because that is the thing, when I make a character, I need to know a little bit what kind of class I'm gonna make as well, so I can, like, you know, get an idea of what I want to do. And with that, I am thinking on doing an bony boy wizard. 
So we gonna go with the wizard here. I actually never done a wizard before. Uh, I played alchemist. I played bard. I played cleric, uh, druid, fighter, monk. I think I played ranger. I played lots of classes here, but I haven't played all. But though so far my favorite one is the witch. The witch is. A Awesome class. That's so many cool things. Alexander von Strauss, as I mentioned, I love that guy. Uh, was a witch, and he had like this magical uh, thing etched to his nails, which is a witch feet. So he could like literally like empower his nails, and he could shoot them out thirty feet and all that. That was really fun. That was so fucking awesome. Oh god, I love it. But yeah, and we're gonna make a wizard, and a wizard get key ability, intelligence. So we're gonna have intelligence, which obviously is a little bit of a weakness considering we get a flaw in intelligence but that's why we put 15 there so we technically would turn 13 but it turned 15 again by the spell class and i want to put 15 in wisdom i feel like we should be a little bit willpower in that and we're gonna go with a nice juicy charisma 12 and I'm gonna go with a nine here, cause yeah, this will be this will be, this will be good. And now, of course, we do get plus two in dexterity and plus two in charisma. So we get we get thirteen and we got fourteen. So that's nice. Now, of course, in Pathfinder two, there is the system where you literally have points, uh, like you have a certain amount of points. Uh, you start with like 10 and then you get your ability modifiers and stuff like that to increase and decrease and whatnot. So me and my friends have always played with you we roll our we roll our stats but we don't get the free ability boost though. So instead we do get these and this one but we don't get the free one which we could pick it where you want to because we in general get higher stats anyways because of the roles and yeah so that's how we do it of course it's very different how everyone else do it so it's important that you are in cahoots with your maker so to speak your dm your maker that's a bit weird but yeah and with that we're gonna go over a little bit quickly to what where what was i going oh yeah backgrounds because after all we need a background to our character and uh, this one is already very keen i, I, I could see that for my character once and he thought he was a great magician he was a great wizard in his mind but he the school the academy couldn't understand his brilliancy so he left and one day he just died and was returned back to skeleton without realizing that so that could definitely go well an acrobat alt can start out low and this is also something that you need to think a little bit about and if it's okay with your dm uh, especially if there is some that is a bit rare, like maybe Amnesiac or Anti-Magical. That would be quite problematic if you're a mage and can't use magic correctly. Like, oh shit. Oh shit, this is bad. This is bad. Astrologer. Uh, you have Bandit. Bandit's, Bandit's fun. Blessed Bookkeeper. Uh, there is man many different ones here. I think, I think it's really fun because it can really just change so much with your character like what were they before they became the adventurer they are now the wizard uh, bony boy is now what were bony boy before he was wizard the bony boy he was an cultist probably uh, maybe uh, curse yeah well he, he probably considered himself cursed which he's probably not discarded duplicate yeah this is pretty sad actually Someone created you for a specific purpose. Some important person, be it a story or the royal. So they literally made you like a clone and then yeeted you, you off the fucking senses. They're like, what the fuck? That's that's messed up. Driver, which is pretty funny. I'm a taxi driver, baby. So yeah, so there's a lot of like this different kind of like backgrounds that all give you two build boosts. One to dexterity or charisma and one free. Uh, as per usual, though, as I mentioned, for example, I'm gonna go with, for the heck of it, I'm gonna go with an. Uh, da, 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 da. I was an, uh, well, not me, but my bony boy was an mystic tutor before he became what he is today. So, choose two ability boosts. One must be intelligent or wisdom. 
and one is a free ability. But as I mentioned, we don't take the free ability because we already get pretty good stat in general. So I get to pick Intelligence or Wisdom. So I'm gonna go with Intelligence so I get a little bit more oomph in that regard. So yeah, that is one way to increase your stats a little bit and you're getting a little bit higher stats in, especially the key stats you really need. Your innate magical trait is Arcane or Occult. You're trained with Arcane or Occult and the kind of galore. You gain recognized spell skill feats. You're getting those stats. Um, wait, let's see. Your innate magical is... Yeah, mine is... As soon as I'm a wizard, it's Arcane. So I get... Tra you're trained in the Arcane. So I get... Tra oh god, I'm in the wrong place. Here we are. So we get trained in Arcane. And... We get Acad Academia Lore. So we can do it like this, Academia Lore, Spoken here, Academia, Bapoink, and we get a feat, which is nice feat, I like feat, which is the recognized spell feat, and I tend to do like this, I copy the link, and then I'm going down here, feats, recognize, I can recognize spell, level 1, like that. Then I can like easily like copy this link because if I want to like more specific like oh yeah yeah I mean roll twenty have very good system and all that but uh, it's not always I have access to an uh, form and character sheet there so I tend to do it like this and then I add bonus I, oh wait I can do it like this back BG background like that so we're done with that part let's go over to Skeleton heritage. We haven't decided one yet. I am gonna go with a monstrous skeleton. I think there could be that they are part of an uh, once they were tiefling that did the tiefling things and then they died. Wait, tieflings? Yeah, tieflings are the ones with the horns. What the fuck was I thinking? I'll need to check here. What the fuck was I thinking on? Uh, I was thinking on oh, Fetchling was the one with the, the shadow plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tieflings are the ones with the horns and the devil stuff. Yeah, yeah. There, there we go. There we go. See, I almost know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna be uh, having horns. So we're gonna be a monster skeleton race, a monstrous skeleton boy. Monstrous, yes. And with that, I get an unarmed attack. Which, depending on... With a horn, it's piercing damage. Uh, one d d I mean, obviously, when you think about it, per se, it's not very good, like, for a wizard to have, like... Oh, yeah, you'll get a melee like that? Horn. <laughs> but... I think it's more important that the character feels, like, interesting and more fun. And you know what? Maybe one day the horn will save the day, you know? Oh, shite. Minus one. <laughs> but, you know what? I think it counts as a dexterity. What? Was it what? Was it finesse? Yes! With finesse, uh, you can use dexterity instead of strength to attack rolls. Woo! Uh, still, you need to use strength to damage. But, I get easier to hit than that, at least. But, yeah. So, and also... Uh, I'm not a player that I like to optimize a character. I like to have a character that's good in some things, but have instead also weaknesses and things they are not good at. So my teammates can have... What I like is when we all have things we are good at, so we all can get a chance to shine, you know? Maybe we have someone that's very good with, like, smithing or stuff like that, and we need to have something that... Well, a craftsman. Maybe we have someone that is good with uh, like uh, certain skills we need, and all of that. You know, so it's not one character have everything like optimized, but which is nothing wrong if people like to play like that. Of course, we have all different playstyles and stuff like that. Is what make RP games like this so fucking fun. But for me though, I feel like it's me personally very more fun to have weaknesses and differences and stuff like that. And now, of course, we have different skeleton feats uh, as in life so in death specific memory of your life are hot only but you know things without remembering why can you take more about that you gain adopted sensory feet which which can be really interesting uh, which honestly I think is not really that in 
good per se, because you can pick it on your one of your general feats instead. Uh, though it's kind of nice, because you can have it re uh, registered to, like, for example, me, my character have been Tiefling in a previous life, that they have this, like, oh yeah, some of my feats, some of my, some of my spot is still collected to the fucking, um, you know, my Tiefling ancestry. And then you have Collapse. You collapse in a pile of bows, mitigating the worst damage you would have taken. A trigger attack is only the amount to deal with one hit. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty fun, to be honest. Like, oh no, collateral damage. <laughs> and then you have Play Dead. And also you can Undead Empathy. You can make Diplomacy checks with Mindless Undead, which is really cool, actually. And Play Dead. This is really fun. And it's the skill I'm gonna go with, because I think that's fun. Now I play, play dead, level one, like that, and then it's ancestry. Now the thing I think is, re re I'm not entirely sure, but there is some, th that's something I will definitely fucking abuse in this game, and it is that being able to dislocate your body, aka literally able to take your head and keep it around the corner so you don't need to lean the entire body, you just grab your head and just poke around the corner, or you fucking throw your head so you can see up, up high. I don't think there is something to say against that, and I will fucking do that, because that's something I think is just really, really fun. I mean, probably they could set rules against it, like, yeah, you can't do it because your magical magical essence that makes you keep you together, not to, you know, like, separate your body parts, but I think that would be really, really fucking fun, and something I would definitely do, because, you know, if I'm gonna be a silly bono boy, I'm gonna do that, and go in full fucking hand with that. And with that, we also get 6 HP constitution modifier, Plus Skeleton 6, so it's 12 HP. We don't start off very strong, but you know what? We are Wizard Bony Boy. We get level 1. And then you have for the class, we have everything you need to roleplay. You get tips and tricks like that, like with Skeleton Boy. And then you get all the roles and proficiencies. Train perception. Let's go with. We are training perception. Train like that. Uh, trained in fortitude and reflect. Expert in will. That's the only one that stands out. Everyone else is trained. So you get your stats over here, which is like total plus seven in will. Woohoo! Uh, speed. It's 25. We saw that before with a bony boy. We are trained in our class, and it's based on intelligence, as since we are wizard, we're trained in armor class, or the lack of it, readily. We are mostly bones. We get trained in arcane, plus two additional skills, combined with your intelligence modifier. And so we get arcane, but we got that from the background, so we get, or readily, we get it from the class, and since we got it already from that, we get an extra skill, so I'm gonna put that in uh, Deception, because I feel like it can be good to pretend you're dead, like, oh, I'm um, yes, a pile of bones, please ignore me. And we get two plus extra. That was, we're gonna turn that down. And we have three, so five extra skills. With that, we're gonna, we're gonna go with Religion, I'm gonna go with Stealth, we're gonna go with mm, Survival, Occultism, and medicine. Yeah, the reason I'm going with, for example, medicine is so me, me as a skeleton boy, you know, you know which bones I can pick and how to get nice bones. Because I like my bones nice and nice. That's what I like my bones to be. And the occultism and religion, religion especially, is very strongly like associated with undead and stuff like that. So it's something that feels like they have been studying. Like, yeah, why am I like this? Uh, it's cool, but it's good to know, you know? So, yeah. So we got and Stealth and Fevery. It's just very good to have, I think, personally. Now, of course, you don't get so many skills compared to, like, a rogue. I had a rogue, and she literally had... My, well, the rogue I mentioned in the beginning, my orc rogue, etc. She literally had, like, all skills in the fucking uh, paper here. It was... she Rogues are skill monkeys, man. They are skill monkeys to the wazoo. 
And then you get trained in the club, crossbow, dagger, heavy crossbow, and staffu. So we can write it here. Uh, club, cross... I'm gonna just wizard whips. We are training that. Training on armor attacks. And training all armors. Yeah, we're gonna get any armors. Yeah, yeah, I forgot that. We are a fucking wizard. We're gonna fucking die. We train in arcane spell attacks and yeah, and that we have down here. Trained. Intelligence modifier. So yeah, we got 16 in our spell attack. Well, spell DC. And spell attack 6. Whee! And it's arcane we have here. But yeah, so we're gonna continue on here a little bit. We have uh, all these things. Ancestor background, initial proficiencies, arcane spellcasting, arcane schools, arcane bond, arcane thesis. This is something I really love with Pathfinder 2. Is all of these fancy new stuff. We got so many cool things we can play around with. And making each class feeling really unique, you know? So we're gonna pick an arcane school and an arcane thesis. And arcane school is uh, the different schools. Like, yeah, you have divination, is like whole imagining, stuff like that. And arcane schools here, for I'm understanding, is that every time you, you get to pick one and you get specialized in one group of magic, which is really, really kind of cool, actually. Uh, as a duration, as an abjurer, you might master auto protection, strengthening defense and preventing attacks, and even turning magic against itself. Uh, you add one level one abjuration spell, such as Featherfall, to your spell book. You learn a protection board school spell. So you're getting a, a lot of stuff like this. Then you have Universalist, which is more like you don't specialize in one kind of magic. You you use them equally. So you don't get any extra extra spell, but you can drain bond item once per day. Uh, extra instead, which is really cool. But for the sake of it, I'm gonna go with Necromancy. We have Necromancy for some particular reason <clears throat> as our uh, arcane school. You, we learn what the fuck is it called? The grave. You fire a ray of sickening energy. Uh, the target becomes sickened two and slowed. Uh, the target becomes sickened one. Yeah, no, I'm, honestly, that's pretty. That's pretty nice, actually. If you can sicken one and slow them, that's pretty neat. So yeah, that's what we get. I, I'm gonna go with like this class, wizard, necromancy school. I write in like school, and then we have arcane thesis. During your study to become a full-fledged wizard, you produce a thesis of unique magical research on one of variety of topics. So yeah, this is literally like, oh, uh, my high school thesis is this. Um, and there is a bunch of these. I haven't really read too much about them, so that's something I need to do. Since I haven't played Wizard, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm checked on them before. Uh, spell Substitution, which is... I remember my group's Wizard had... I think he had that one, because he he could switch spells. He spent 10 minutes to like switch a spell to something we needed. like whoop, 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 Which is very flexible, to be honest. Uh, helps you out like, oh no, I need a certain spell. Okay, we can fix that. Give me 10 minutes. Uh, so I will probably go with set spell substitution for that. And with that, most of the character level 1 is actually done. The only thing, of course, we need to pick spells. And with that we get cantrips, 5 of them. And how does it work with spell books for the wizard? I think it's you get two level one spells. Okay, you can prepare up to two sp spells. Okay, but how the fuck do I get spells? As I said, I haven't played Mage of before because um, sample spell book. Oh yeah, yeah. You get a spell book and oh, it seems like you get one, two, three, four, five, five different spells. Plus one from your uh, school, Necromancy in my case. Uh, but I can only cast and prepare two spells, so that's the thing. You might have a bunch of spells, but you can only prepare uh, one spell, well two spells in this case, for the day at level one. So it's like 
What spells do we need for today, boys? Uh, I'm not really sure. L let's go with this one. Oh, God damn it, Steve the Bone. Why did you pick that spell? Like, ah, oh, sorry. But yeah, so this is something I think is really fun. And before we do continue on and ending this video, because we are kind of like done our level one wizard bony boy, except giving him a name, which is, you can ignore all this uh, dirt bony bony boy. Okay, accidentally dirt bony boy, but okay, that's his name. And we're going to save. Okay, sheet saved. Perfect. And it's really fun to see how much there is about this. You know, building a character and all that. We just literally built and made a character. But we haven't done much about him as a personality and stuff like that. Which is obviously another thing to make with a character. You know? Why are they like they are? Why do they search um, the knowledge? Maybe they, there's a reason for all that, you know? That's something I always love to make with RP and stuff like that. Why I'm so fond of it. Why it meant so much to me. And I just really, really love that. So we're gonna check out one thing though before we ending this, and it is the archetypes. Because with this, with this Book of the Dead, have they released a bunch of new archetypes. Archetypes are literally um, multi-classing. Uh, when you, every second level, level two, level four, level six, you get a class feat. And the class feats are, well, Class feats, you can pick specific unique feats for a class, or you can pick archetypes extra for that. And with that, they have added a lot of new things, which I think is really, really cool. And for example, we have, let's see, what do we have them? Eldritch Archer is pretty neat. Uh, yeah, like the Exorcist is a new thing they've added. You can see it, Source, Book of the Dead. And Exorcist, you learn to attract and quill and purify spirits. And yeah, this is something that, and of course, you get the, when you pick this dedication, you get certain stuff going on here. And as you level up again, level six and level eight, level not ten, you can pick extra feats that give you extra abilities to that, which I think is really really neat. And I think this is really fun because. They have added, you can get archetype, well, dedication, ghost. You can get ghoul. You can get mummy. You can get lich. There's so many new, like, undead archetypes, and I fucking love that. So, they mean that even if you are a, 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 a an, an, an character that is alive, you can get a dedication. And honestly, that's such a cool thing, because, for example, you were killed by ghoul fever on Nay. Maybe something happened, you actually had a character that died by it. Now you can still continue playing it, but you're playing a character that suffer uh, by the ghoul fever, becoming a ghoul themselves, but you still manage to wrestle your own soul and your own mind, which I think is just such a cool concept, you know? This is so fucking cool, I love it. And though the problem when you're a ghoul is that you need to eat flesh. Uh, f though. The positive is, dead people. You don't eat like zombies from living, but you eat from... Your undead craving is for, for flesh of dead creatures. So when you party have killed lots of people, it's fucking Smurgos board for you, baby. <laughs> I love this. I'm super excited to see all the new things they add. They added so much with um, guns and gears and all that as well and all these new classes so many new spells oh i'm so hyped for this and yeah that is a little bit of the undead stuff going here so check it out I'll, as i said i'll leave links in the description so you can check out archives of nephis and uh, myth weavers to make your own character and uh, hopefully you enjoy this as much as i do and you get to give this a try there are so many interesting new concepts with this and i'm excited for this so, yeah, we're exploring a little bit of the undead, we're exploring a little bit of the possibilities, and of course, there's gonna be a lot of more, like, I could probably done more depths, because there are lots of, like, uh, awesome fucking feats, like, uh, well-armed, where you can literally attach your arm, so you can get a further reach, which is really fun, or, uh, where is the bone missile, which you would take a rib and shoot it as an arrow, which is just really fucking fun, I love that. So there's so many fucking awesome things, so definitely worth to check out. 
But yeah, I will be back with more. And if this is something interesting and people want me to continue doing more vids like this, uh, try, trying to do a bit more in depth at least, you know, write in the comments. I appreciate all of that. And I want to do more role playing videos because I, I just really love table tabletops in general. But I've been a bit slow on that. So thank you everyone for watching though. See you later. And have a continue super great day.